everybody. It's time now for the weekly matchup show. The Oklahoma Sooners are looking for revenge against the Baylor Bears. <laughs> never thought we'd be saying that, but of course, prior to last year, Baylor had never beaten Oklahoma in college football, but that changed in Waco in 2011 when eventual Heisman Trophy winner Robert Griffin III threw a touchdown pass in the final seconds to Terrence Williams, and Baylor beat Oklahoma 45-38. This year, Sooners are heavy favorites to knock down the Bears. The game will be Saturday, November 10th, 2.30 kickoff on Fox Sports. Sooners, again, heavy favorites at home to get revenge on Baylor. Before we talk about the Sooners and the uh, Bears extensively, um, some news to report, and we're recording this show on Wednesday, November 7th, so we found out just a few moments ago about the passing of a college football legend. And you know you're a big-time legend when you did terrific things at two schools, in particular two schools that are big rivals, Oklahoma and Texas. Darrell K. Royal played his college football at Oklahoma. As a matter of fact, he was uh, born and raised in Oklahoma in Hollis, born back in the uh, mid-20s, went to high school at Hollis, pretty small town in southwest Oklahoma, and while playing at Oklahoma, he played under Bud Wilkinson, was a quarterback, but was more known as a defensive back. In fact, to this day, Royal still leads OU in career interceptions with 18. But Royal made his name big time as the head coach at the University of Texas. He was only 33 when he got the head coaching job at UT. Coached there 20 years, won 11 Southwest Conference titles and three national championships. In fact, um, current Texas head coach Matt Brown um, has always been extremely complimentary of Darrell Royal. I think they were they were pretty close. So you know that um, that uh, Brown is is really somber um, and will be for a while. In fact, you know Texas will be playing with heavy hearts on Saturday when they host Iowa State. As a matter of fact, as you probably already know, um, the stadium in Austin has been named uh, Darrell Royal Stadium for quite some time. And I'm sure OU for their home game against Baylor Saturday will have some type of a tribute for Royal as well. So Darrell Royal, former OU player and Texas head coach, uh, passing away at the age of 88 due to Alzheimer's. And he's no question uh, going to be missing the college football world. Speaking of rivals, I don't know if you've heard, but Oklahoma and Nebraska it looks like will be renewing their rivalry in 2021 and 2022. You have to schedule these things pretty far in advance. I already know that later this decade, OU has home at home series with LSU, Tennessee, Ohio State, and Army. In fact, next year is the payback game for OU as they uh, go to South Bend to play Notre Dame. So you have to schedule these non-conference marquee games way in advance. So OU and Nebraska will play in Norman in 2021, and OU will go to Lincoln in 2022. So it's cool that those uh, two schools who have a lot of respect for each other, do the Sooners and Huskers, will get to renew that rivalry. And... Don't know if you've heard, but it looks like in 2014, the Sugar Bowl will be known as the Champions Bowl, kind of like what the Rose Bowl has amongst the uh, Big Ten and Pac-12 champions meeting. Well, it looks like that will be the case, too, when it comes to the SEC champ and the Big 12 champ. Um, the Sugar Bowl will um, host that particular bowl game, and it will be that way as far as the Big 12 and SEC champions, unless one or both of those champions finish in the top four in the final polls because in two years we'll also have that four-team playoff. So if one of them or both of them should finish in the top four, then they would take the next best team from those conferences. So it's cool to see the best from the Big 12 and the best from the eight from the SEC, which has no question been the best conference in college football the last six or seven years, uh, meeting in a major bowl game. Thought for a second that maybe um, Arlington and Cowboy Stadium would get the uh, Champions Bowl, but it looks like it'll be the uh, Sugar Bowl. So big news right there as far as the future of college football. Now let's get into a little bit about Oklahoma football. Last week, of course, impressive over um, Iowa State. 
impressive as far as how they ended the first half and how they began the second half, taking a 7-6 to six lead and ballooning it to 21-13 and really making it count at a 35-20 win. Offense racking up nearly 600 yards of total offense. Landry Jones over 400 yards passing. And a little bit of concern entering the game about the ground game because we didn't know what the status of Damian Williams would be. As a matter of fact, he played sparingly in that game, and it was um, Brennan Clay and the offensive line that did the job against a, a good run-stopping defense in Iowa State. Clay had well over 150 yards in that matchup. And I've got to imagine that Clay, again, will be playing quite a bit this week as well because right now he's the hot guy for Oklahoma. And I'm not sure if Williams is completely um, over his injury that he had suffered a couple of weeks ago against Notre Dame. But at least you have options with Clay and, of course, with um, Dominic Whaley if needed. And, of course, you could still use Trey Millard out of the backfield as well. Before we talk a little bit about the Baylor defense, talk about the Baylor offense. And the Baylor offense has been putting up points and yardage big time like a pinball machine. Um, Nick Florence, you might remember a few years ago, um, was a starting quarterback at Baylor because RG3 was hurt in 2009. And... Um, Florence was just a freshman, and he looked like one as uh, Baylor only scored seven points that day. I think OU won 32-7 um, three years ago. Of course, that was um, a game where Sam Bradford played in in his final year at OU. But Florence struggled big time. Now that he's a senior, and now that even though he hasn't played a whole lot since then because of RG3's return um, in 2010 and 2011, Florence has at least had a lot of familiarity with the offense, got a lot of reps, more knowledge, and probably a, a better connection between him and Art Bryles. So you could tell in the numbers that uh, Nick Florence has put up that he's a much better quarterback than what we saw three years ago in Norman. And the stats prove it. Um, over 3,000 yards passing, 25 um, touchdown passes. Um, he has done a terrific job for a Baylor offense that even though we'll see them run the ball, we will see them uh, run the ball um, quite a few times on Saturday. Uh, we will still predominantly see the passing attack. Terrence Williams, he's having an All-America type season, over 1,300 yards receiving for the uh, Bears. Um, outstanding wideout. Of course, last year had the game-winning catch against Oklahoma. Now, speaking of the ground game, Glasgow Martin right now, he leads the team in rushing. The rushing yards aren't going to blow you away, but they've gotten production from him and also from Jared Salubi, who's also rushed for over 400 yards as well. So the Sooners have to be aware that even though they're going to be facing a terrific passing attack in Baylor, they will not hesitate to mix in the run as well. So I think if you're the Oklahoma defense, you're going to have to take chances in this game. Otherwise, it's going to be a pinball shootout, and who knows how the final score is going to end up. So I think the Oklahoma defense will have to take some chances on some outside blitzes. I think they're going to have to show things to Baylor that maybe Baylor hasn't seen Oklahoma do on film this year. Baylor will be able to score points in this ball game, but Oklahoma defense has to make sure that there are times in which they come up with stops, and also if Baylor is driving deep, try to hold them to field goals. So that's the bad news, is that you are going against a good offense in Baylor. Now the good news is, is that Baylor's defense is an embarrassment. Uh, 117th in the country in points allowed. They're giving up over 39 points a game. Look, if you're the Baylor offense, you got to be pretty fed up. You score 50 points against Texas, and you score 63 against West Virginia. That should be good enough to win ball games for you. And instead, they lost both of those games. They gave up 70 to the Mountaineers, and they gave up 56 to the Longhorns. Baylor started this year off at 3-0, and and right now they're at 4-4. Four and four. And I know last year Baylor's defense wasn't anything spectacular. I think they got to 10-3 and three and won the Alamo Bowl over Washington in spite of their defense, but the defense has digressed even more, and I didn't think that was possible, but they have gotten worse. It is by far the worst defense in all of the Big 12 Conference, period, and I think that that's going to be the biggest reason why Baylor will not get to six wins this year and will not get to bowl eligibility. Remember, the Bears still have to play Kansas State, they still got to play Oklahoma State, and they still have to play Texas Tech, and I don't think they're going to be favored in any of those ball games to close the year out. They're definitely big underdogs this week to the Sooners. 
Biggest thing for Baylor is that their defense, their um, defensive backfield has been softer than a pillow. Um, Oh, you should have wide open receivers this game. They should be able to run the ball as well. In my opinion, the only way this becomes a close ball game and the only way the Sooners have a shot at losing is if Oklahoma beats Oklahoma. It won't have much to do with Baylor because that defense stinks for the Bears. It will have, to me, everything to do with self-infliction, staying away from turnovers, staying away from having to settle for field goals on a consistent basis. Making sure you get touchdowns when you're inside the 20-yard line. The Oklahoma offense should have a fantastic day running and especially passing. It would be a big disappointment playing at home and playing against a Baylor defense that has more holes than Swiss cheese if you cannot score a bunch of points on these guys. You'd be able to score at least 45 on them. Baylor's defense is that susceptible. Final thoughts on this game. Look, I look for the Oklahoma offense to have a huge day like I said I do think Baylor will have some offensive success but I am not anticipating this to be a 52-45 type ball game Baylor will score some points but Oklahoma is going to score a lot more my final score I'm going to go 48 to 21 I think Oklahoma will win by a comfortable margin and get victory number seven on the season and of course the following week you're playing against another good offense but another bad defense on the road against West Virginia. But that will be on November 17th. For this week, November 10th, look for Oklahoma to get the win and to get revenge on Baylor. Just a reminder, I will have my college football pick show uh, coming up later in the week in which I go head-to-head -head against the coin as I'll be picking college football games throughout the country against the spread. And then my OU Baylor postgame show will be Saturday evening. Uh, should be about an hour after the Oklahoma Baylor game is over. Again, my prediction, I got 48-21 Oklahoma to get the win. Boomer Sooner.